also uh, joining in with us on Facebook. Uh, it's good to have you uh, with us this morning. I do want to start with a couple of announcements. Uh, the youth are meeting tonight at, from 6 to 8 o'clock, and tonight we are going to, to tackle the topic of uh, how do you explain dinosaurs in the Bible uh, together. So uh, um, I told my daughter it might be like a four-hour um, lesson that we have tonight, but I've tried to cut it down as much as possible. I think I've got it down to about an hour and 45 minutes. Or no, maybe an hour and a half. We'll see. We'll see what we get through. But uh, uh, that was one of the questions they had, so we're gonna we're gonna tackle that tonight. Uh, also, the next youth Sunday will be January thirty first here at the end of the month. So the youth will be doing the service that day. Uh, also, Bible study uh, will not be starting this week. Um, we have we had a little delay uh, in the the material. It is not here yet. Uh, so it will be starting January twentieth. Uh, will be the first Bible study in the next new se session, and it will be Dream Big by Bob Goff. Uh, many of you uh, had uh, enjoyed the last series that we did by uh, Bob Goff, and so uh, I know people are, are very excited. Thank you, Faith. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> very excited to uh, to look into uh, this new series that uh, that he has. Uh, also, uh, Bob Schreckengoss will be here on February 7th during the morning worship service to, to preach uh, for us. Uh, so uh, we can look forward to that. Uh, does anyone else have any other announcements? We do have uh, next Sunday is the last day to bring toys for the toy drive. Uh, so make sure uh, you can bring them in during the week or next Sunday with you uh, for the, the toy drive for Romania. Anyone else have any other announcements this morning? All right, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we just thank you that we can be in your presence, whether we be at home or whether we're here. Um, Lord, that we know that you are there. Um, and where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there in the midst of them. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would, would come and bless us with your presence. And, and, Lord, that you would teach us from your word today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship this morning.
this time I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward for the morning ties and offerings. Just 
time of praises. Does anyone have a praise that they'd like to share? What's God been doing uh, uh, good this week?
us. We did have a couple uh, that came in. Um, remember the Jerry Songer family? Um, Jerry Songer Jr. Um, passed away, uh, and Bay McCall uh, also passed away. So remember those uh, in our prayers. And also um, remember Tracy and Dawn in their home not feeling uh, well. Um, they don't know what's going on, but just prayers for them. Um, anybody else have a prayer request? Yes. Yes, Scott. Um, my Bible school teacher, Russ, he has been admitted to the hospital with COVID, and uh, he, it's pretty serious for him. So just prayers for him and long-term complications. Okay. Yes. Um, Mary Elmer says, continue to pray for my dad as he is here for rehab at the nursing home and now has COVID. spoken request just want to lift up a hand um, before we take these to the Lord in prayer I just want to spend some time worshiping um, and then we'll take these to the Lord in prayer
Lord, we do tell of your goodness today. Lord, we thank you for birthdays. Lord, we praise you for Scott and 50 years on earth. Lord, we praise you for Julian and for T. Stewart who uh, were in the nursing home and, and, and uh, got COVID and Lord, you brought them through that. And, and Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, we thank you that Randy is here with us today and able to, to be back worshiping with us today. Lord, we just, we just praise you. Lord, we even thank you that 2020 is over and we get a fresh start and a fresh year. And Lord, may we just proclaim your goodness over 2021 as we look forward to what you're going to do. And Lord, we think of all of those who have lost loved ones. We think of the Jerry Saunders Jr. family, Lord, and the Bay McCall family, and, and, and the father of this friend that has passed, and, and another friend that, that lost a dad and having uh, just trouble um, dealing with that, and for uh, the Stacey Maganotti family, Lord, we, we lift those up who are grieving, and Lord, pray for you to be their peace, to give them comfort and strength, and to wrap them up in your loving arms. Lord, we just uh, also want to think of um, Tracy and Donovan as they were, were not feeling well this week, and Lord, we lift them up and pray health over them, Lord. Lord, we think of, of Scott's Bible teacher, Russ, who has uh, COVID and is not doing well with it. We, we pray your hand of healing over him and protection over him. Lord, we pray for Mary's dad, who also was diagnosed with COVID. Father God, may he recover fully and, and, and be well and whole again. And, and, and Lord, we think of this, the Davis family that uh, had a house that burned down this past week. Lord, we pray for you to be their provider. Lord, send angels, send people into their lives, Lord, to help provide and, and to lead them through to the other side of this tragedy. And, and Lord, we just come asking for you to move in our midst and be where we are today. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time, the children are dismissed to Children's Church. You know, it seems to be a constant struggle um, in our house now with the, the boys getting a little older, whether it's time to go to bed or time to eat a meal or time to leave the house. They're almost always playing a video game. Uh, and if you have boys, you know that this is, but dad, can I just finish this level? Or dad, uh, the, my Madden game has three minutes left in the second quarter and I need to finish it too. And there's always some excuse that involves, can I get to somewhere further than where I am right now? Does anybody resonate with that? Um, um, it might be actually your husband that's that way too. Um, <laughs> And so there's part of you that wants to be a good parent. You say, okay, finish this level, finish this game, finish this thing. And you come back in 15 minutes and they've started another game or they've started, a, you know, you can tell because it's a different game than they had in before. And, and it's, and it's always, but dad, I need to finish this level. I need to get to the, you know, to a good stopping place. One good thing about video games is they're broken up into levels so you don't have to play the whole game at once. Isn't that a nice thing? Don't you wish life had levels uh, where you knew you were progressing or you knew you weren't going anywhere where you, you, you just saw that, okay, today, I, as long as I get this, this, this done, I can go to the next level. I can get there. I, I can see the progress that I'm making. But life isn't always broken up so that we can have easy segments or easy levels. And so it can be, it, it can, you can stay in the same place for far too long. 
How many of you have ever felt like that? Where you just, it's just the same old thing. I'm spinning my wheels. I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm staying in the same place. And, and there, because there's nothing reminded you that you need to, to keep going or keep pushing to the next benchmark. And I think that there should be because it would make life a whole lot easier. And so for the next several Sundays, I want to focus on our growth as Christians and how we can keep pushing ourselves um, to, to get to the next level in growth as a Christian. And I want to, to take a look at several different areas where I feel that, that the, the, the Christians and, and the church needs to grow in and, and, and to, to get to the next level so that we don't get just remain stagnant. I had a pastor that once told me that you're either moving toward God or you're moving away from Him. There's, there's no, there's no. Okay, I've gotten here, so I've arrived, and and I'm going to stay right where I am. You know what happens? You get swept downstream in the opposite direction. There's no standing still in the kingdom of God. And so I think it would be wise for us to find out how we can be sure that we're growing in these several areas in our life. And in our faith. And so that we can flourish no matter what the world throws at you. Because if there's anything that we learned from 2020, the world can throw some stuff at you. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we weren't ready for that here. So I want to start this series by taking a look at a familiar passage of Scripture. And, and, and we're going to look at the, the very first words of the Sermon on the Mount. And, and we know that the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus speaking to his disciples, and, 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 and it is one of the, the most, uh, one of the greatest sermons that's ever really been written. But at the very beginning, Jesus is beginning to speak, and these words kind of get lost in the shuffle. shuffle. And so if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Matthew 5, verses 1 through 2. Or you can follow along on your screen. Matthew 5, verses 1 through 2. And it says this. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, okay, we're going to stop right there. So before he goes into even giving his sermon, I want to take a look at these particular words. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. It's important to understand that there was a large crowd of people that had gathered around Jesus that day. Because they wanted to see what this Jesus would say, or more importantly, what this Jesus would do, because he's beginning to get a little bit of a reputation as a miracle worker, as someone who does the impossible, as someone who teaches like no one else teaches. And so Jesus sees the crowd and immediately begins to teach the crowd. That's not what it says. Jesus sees the crowd walks away from the crowd up the hill, and then he sees who comes to him. Amen. So we're seeing that some people are at different levels of discipleship than others are at in their walk. And so there are some people who are in the crowd that are just fans of Jesus. There are some people in the crowd who are hearers. There are some who are followers, and there are some who end up being complete disciples. And so I want to take a look at this, uh, a closer look at each one of these groups, because every one of you who are here, every one of you who are joining us somewhere, are in one of these groups in your, in your walk to become a complete disciple of Jesus Christ. So if we can discover which group that we're in and push ourselves to move forward to the next group, you'll have growth. You'll get to the next level of what it means to be a disciple. And so before we go any further, I'm going to ask Randy, would you open us with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. Lord, I would ask that you would anoint God's uh, thoughts in this tongue, Father God, as you bring this message. And help us, Lord, to have ears to hear and, and to open up, uh, Lord, to the message that will be presented to us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Am
Amen. So the first group of people that we see in this scripture are what I would call the fans of Jesus. They're the fans of Jesus. And if you know me even a little bit, you know that I'm a fan of most things Pittsburgh sports. If, if you hadn't seen my office before or the current decorating, it was all it's stuff, Steelers stuff, Penguin stuff, Pirate stuff. And, I, and I've been a fan of Pittsburgh sports most of my life, as probably most of you are. Maybe a little less fandom. I know Buck loves the Steelers uh, and, uh, and all their Super Bowl wins. But uh, it's not hard being a fan of the Steelers, is it? We got six Super Bowls. You know, the most ever went 11 games before anybody even beat us this year. The Penguins, they seem to be good every year. Mario Lemieux was, was popular when I was growing up. He led them to a couple of, uh, uh, of Stanley Cups. And then you lose Mario, you get Sidney Crosby. That ain't a bad trade-off either. And, and so I've seen the Penguins win five Stanley Cups. It's not easy to be a fan of the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> They won five World Series titles, but I was, I was not yet two the last time that they won one, so I have not yet seen one, and in fact, I have a rule now, Kim watches every game. I have a rule, they get not one cent of my money until they put some money back in the team. I'm sorry, I can only take so much. It was 20 plus years of losing season, even a lifelong fan has his limits, I'm sorry. But that's what being a fan is all about. As a fan, you like something or someone and you root for that team or that person and you go from time to time to see what they're going to do and you, when things are going good, you talk about your team and when things are going bad, you just forget about your team and it's from time to time. And, and this doesn't just happen with sport teams, it happens in our faith. Many people are a fan of Jesus. Many people are a fan of showing up to church a couple times a year. And when it doesn't appear that Jesus is doing anything in their life, as a fan of Jesus, it's tempting to walk away and find something else. As a fan of Jesus, there's no real commitment. It's more of a what are you going to do for me lately type relationship that you have with Jesus? You would think that this is a bad type of relationship to have with Jesus, but let me tell you, you probably all started this way. You started out as a fan of Jesus where you showed up at a church service because someone invited you. And so they started talking about, this sounds pretty good, and, and you became a fan of, of, of Jesus Christ, and, or you heard someone's testimony. You heard what Jesus had done in someone else's life. How many of you got saved from someone's testament? A couple of you. And you heard what Jesus did for them. And so like, I'm going I'm to check this out. Or, or you heard some good things were happening in a church. And so you went to that church and, and you became a fan of Jesus. And that's where most of the people found themselves on this day. They were fans of Jesus. They wanted to see what he had to offer. And this is what it says. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. So there were crowds around Jesus everywhere that he went. It was hard for him to get away from them. Jesus drew people to him. It could have been curiosity. It could have been, I want to see a miracle. I want to find healing. I want to find deliverance in my life. But most of the people that surrounded Jesus remained fans. They never became disciples. And the proof is in this passage. Most of the crowd refused to walk up the mountain to be with Jesus. All right, Jesus, I'll show up. But I'm not walking up that hill to hear what you have to say. Why didn't you just say it down here where we all are? I'm, I'm not going that far. And if you think about it, their refusal to follow Jesus caused them to miss out on what may have been the greatest sermon that had ever been given. They missed the Sermon on the Mount. And here's the warning to us. 
You can't remain a fan of Jesus. Amen. You have to grow. You have to go. You can start your walk as a fan, but this is a tricky place to be because there are so many flashy things in this world. And so if you remain a fan of Jesus, you might just be, be tempted to say, oh wait, I, love, I like Jesus, but oh, I want to check out this other thing right now. Or I'm going to see what this thing is all about. And so you can start by being a fan, but you have to strive and push harder to get to the next step. And that next step is to not just be a fan, but to be a hearer of what Jesus has to say. So step number two in our, in our path to becoming a complete disciple is that we have to become a hearer of what Jesus says. We have to become a hearer of what Jesus says. So there were some people, if we look back, there were some people that made it up the hill to hear Jesus. And he called them disciples. These people, they were eager to hear what God on earth would have to tell them. And so they went with Jesus up the hill and away from the crowds. And think of all the good news. Let me, let me just sum up all the words of Matthew 5 through 7 in a couple of sentences, which is not easy to do. Okay? They, they were given every one of the Beatitudes in this sermon. Blessed are you who, blessed are those who, but for the first time ever, this was a completely new teaching. They were told how to be salt and light in a world that is dull and dark. Think about this. They were told that the time for an eye to, for an eye was, was over. What the Old Testament taught, that time was over, and there was now a new time that was coming. Jesus taught them how to pray properly, and we'll get into this next week. That's what we're going to, to talk about next week. And gave them the Lord's Prayer. They were told how to store up treasure from heaven, how to give to the needy, how not to worry, how not to judge others. And they were told to ask, seek, and knock for anything that they wanted. This was truly a treasure trove of information that Jesus gave them. And the response to these teachings is found in Matthew 7, if you can bring that up on the screen. And it says this, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. So everyone who heard Jesus in that message said, this was an amazing teaching. This is something that blessed me. This is something that I need to learn from. So the crowd had thinned out, but the crowd that was left was blessed to hear what Jesus had to say. And they are in the hearer group. They heard Jesus. And can I tell you, this is like where 99.9% .9 of people in the church are in. They're in the hearer group. They will come to services on Sunday. They'll probably even come to Bible studies maybe on Wednesday night. And they, they will listen to, to Christian radio. And they'll listen to, 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 uh, to other things that, that talk about Jesus Christ and what he can do and what he can be. This is a good place to be. But this is only step two in your journey to becoming a complete disciple of Jesus Christ. Because there's much more than just hearing the word. Take a look at what James 1, chapter 22 says. Do not merely listen to the word or be a hearer and so deceive yourself. That's not the end of the path, the end of the walk. It says what? Do what it says. Think about how many times we've walked out of the church and we've, we're, we're going to change our lives. And then we don't. There's more than just being a hearer. Step number three is being a follower or a doer. You see, a follower of Jesus Christ does two things. They hear the word of God. And they immediately put it into practice. They hear the word of God and they immediately put it into practice. And Jesus had the opportunity to instill this in his 12 disciples very early on in the ministry. So, so think about this. We have a crowd that is gathered around Jesus. And then out of that crowd we have a group 
that follows Jesus up the mountain. And then out of that group, we have one, two, twelve disciples. Twelve disciples. The crowd really thinned out. There's also, we have a group of about 70 to this, or 72 disciples that are also following him around. So they're, but the crowd had thinned out. And this is what G, the instructions that Jesus gives them. Now we're going, we were in Matthew 5 and we were in Matthew 7. Now let's look ahead to Matthew 9. It says, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. These are the very last words of chapter 9 of Matthew. So God needs workers to bring in the harvest. And this transition, this, this happens when we go from being a hearer only to being a hearer and a doer. We're no longer just a fan. We're no longer just a hearer. We're someone who sees that there's work to be done and we do that work. We see that God's word says that, that we need to do this and we do it. You know, most people claim that about 20% of the people in any given church do about 80% of the work. Yeah. I think that that's wrong. I think about 10% of the people in the church do about 90% of the work now. Because we know this is because the crowd gets smaller the further up the chain that you get. We must push forward because God tells us the harvest is plentiful. You know, most Christians that get accused of being hypocrites are the ones that get stuck in the cycle of being a fan or being a hearer. Those that move on, the, the hearer to doer is maybe the biggest step. Those people that live out their faith, they never get accused of being hypocrites. Because being a follower, being a doer, actually shows people that there's a difference in your life from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it changes and saves every part of us. And this starts by just helping out and doing small things. Seeing, seeing where he tells us to, 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 we need to tell others about Jesus Christ, and we go and tell someone. One person. Stepping out in faith to share your testimony, or serving in a food bank. This step is the marriage of faith and action. And it's the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen in my life. As a pastor, the marriage of faith and action in a believer is a step that I'm so proud when people take. People who are in this stage are constantly growing. They're constantly growing because you know why? When, when, when God sees that you read something in the scripture... And you do something that it tells you to do. God gives you something else to see and something else to do. They're constantly growing and moving. As they hear and do, God gives them more to hear and do. And it's, and it's almost as this, this stage, the people that are in this stage, they're, they're, their faith gets fast-tracked. They begin to grow at an enormous rate. Because God keeps giving them more as he sees their faith blossom. So they move from being a hearer to a follower. They develop more faith, more boldness, and more trust in the Lord. But even this is not the end. There's one more stage in our journey to be a disciple, a complete disciple of Jesus Christ. And that's to be sent out by him, to be a sent out one. On top of progressing from fan to hear to follower, you can reach out by being one who is sent out by God. And so in the very beginning verses of Matthew 10, we have Jesus giving his disciples these words. It says, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. And then down in verse 5, it says, these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or any of the towns of the Samaritans. So we see that the crowd keeps getting smaller and smaller. We have the crowd, 
We have the small group. We have the group of like 70 disciples that are gathered. And now we're down to Jesus called his 12. When you reach the pinnacle of hearing and doing, God gives you your own ministry to accomplish. It's not just going to the pastor and asking, Pastor, what can I do? Although I appreciate that. Pastor, what can I do? It's instead coming to me and says, Pastor, I know God is calling me to this. Can, can, I, can you send me out with your blessing? It might be a part of this church, or you may be sent somewhere else. You may have a, a, a heart for the community. But being sent out means that you have your own calling, your own ministry from God, and that is what you're going to be about. Jesus even reminds the disciples in these last instructions. In Matthew 28, he tells them again, go Therefore, be sent out, therefore, and make what? Disciples of all nations. Not, Jesus doesn't want fans, just fans. Jesus doesn't want just hearers. Jesus doesn't want just followers. He says, I want you to go, therefore, and make disciples. Meaning, get them the whole way from here to here. That's not an easy thing. That's not going to be said by, you know, going to be accomplished by someone saying a prayer. This is a lifelong commitment to get somebody from point A to point B. This is what separates the doers and the followers from the sent out ones. The sent out ones will reap a harvest of their own disciples. And so this morning, I want us to be honest with ourselves. We're all on this path. We're all somewhere along on this journey to being a disciple. If you find yourself here, if you find yourself tuning in, you're somewhere along on this, on this path, path, pathway. So what do you do to get to the next level of discipleship in the coming year? Because let me tell you, it's probably been far too long since you went from one group to the other group. Can we just be honest? It, it's been too long. And so if, if, if you're stuck being just a fan of Jesus, can I encourage you to make this a year where you get in the Word of God? Where you read the Bible and, and, and study the Bible and study the Scripture. You know, nowhere in the Bible are we told to read the Bible. Not one time. We're told to study the Scriptures. We're told to, to uncover what's in there. We're not told to read it. So instead of just reading the Bible, get involved in studying it. Find a good Christian podcast or a good Christian radio show to tune into to grow yourself, to, to make sure that you are go from just being a fan to being a hearer in, in, the, in the step of discipleship. Maybe instead of just coming to church on Sunday, maybe try Sunday school. Add Sunday school to your list. Add Wednesday night Bible study to your list of things that you come to. Really pour God's word into your life in the coming weeks and months and years. And you can move from being a fan to being a hearer of God's word. So if you're stuck in the hearer's category, you need to get to work. You don't need another Bible study. Although you should come to the one that's coming up. You don't need another Bible study. You need to go out and get to work. Ask what needs done around here. We'll give you something to do. Absolutely. Volunteer at a local food bank or a charity. Sign up for a mission trip. Teach a Sunday school class. You've been hearing this for years and years and years. Now take what you've heard and teach it to someone. There are endless ways for you to move from a hearer to doer, and none of them involves coming here to listen to me another time. And for those of you that might be stuck in the doer's category, the thing that you need to, to the most is you need to hear from God. You need to, to press in in prayer. You need to ask him to tell me, what, Lord, what do you have for me this year? 
What is the purpose that you have for me? And, and you need to get other people praying for you and over you so that God speaks your ministry into you. Amen. So what is it that you can do that will result in people becoming disciples as a result of your ministry? You can achieve the next level if you're willing to take God in his word. If you're stuck where you are and you remain stuck, that's on you. You can grow. But you can't rest where you're comfortable. So what will you do in the coming year to move yourself further along the line to being a complete disciple of Jesus Christ? Would you pray with me? Lord, we just thank you for your word. It is so good. It teaches us so much. And Father God, we just, we ask that you would help us to see where we are on this journey to be better disciples, to be more complete, to get to the next level from where we are. And so Lord, I ask for anyone who is stuck that, Lord, that you would give them the nudge that they need, that you would show them the things that, that they need to, to put in their life to, to move forward from being a fan to a hearer to a follower to a sent out one. Lord, you have big plans for all of us. And Lord, those don't come true until we make it to the next step on the journey. So Lord, help us to grow and to become a complete disciple of Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.
want you to, to bring up the picture. It says a disciple is someone who has moved from being the recipient of the church's mission to being responsible for the church's mission. That's the goal. That's, that's where we want you to get. It doesn't have to happen all at once. Make the next step. Get to the next level. We'll work on it and then take the next step. Get to the next level. It doesn't have to be all at once, but get there. Next week, we're going to be talking about how we get to the next level in our prayer life. And uh, I'm excited to see because I've been waiting to get to the next level in my prayer life for a while. So I'm, I'm excited to see what God's going to reveal to, to me this week and, and to, to have him tell us. But uh, go out and get to the next level in your faith walk this week. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful Sunday.